Okay, I believe we are live. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Engage EHS uh, webinar for permit management, the three pains of permit management. We're going to take you through a couple of slides this morning, have a chat, um, and go through any questions you have on the new module that we're releasing. So we have Sean. Well, actually, before we get to doing the introductions, let's do our quick bit of uh, admin. So you'll see on the slide here, if people hopefully are familiar with Zoom, and I know everyone's using it more and more these days. Um, but if you are not, a few little pointers. There's a chat icon. So if you want to say anything, ask anything um, in terms of admin or the Zoom, or if you can't hear something or you need any help, do the chat. And we have Laura on the line helping us there as well. So she'll be answering your questions. If you have any kind of official questions on the on permits, just use the Q&A button. Either one will be fine, but uh, use the Q&A button and we'll try and pick them up as we go through. Uh, so if there's any questions, do that. Or you can raise a hand. I'm not sure what we're raising the hands for, but you can raise a hand and perhaps that's maybe a Q&A just to let us know that there's something there. So um, yeah, those couple of little bits and then we'll talk at the end about sending on some further information and recordings and things like that as well. So um, yeah, so on the line and hopefully you can see us as well, you have Sean, the CTO with Effective. So Sean heads up our product department, looking after everything from specking out what we do to managing the teams as they develop and going through everything else. So Sean has over 30 years experience in IT and there's your wonderful CV stuff there. You can say stuff about that, Sean, if you wish. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I'll inflict a background on myself here okay. today. But uh, good, uh, yeah, good to virtually meet you all. Needless to say, we're all uh, here working from home. Um, yeah, I'm CTO, so uh, I get involved in a, a lot of stuff around planning where the, we want the product to go, um, talking to customers to get feedback on things they like about the product, things they want to see in the product, um, pain points they have that they'd like to see us address related to health and safety. So obviously, permits a big. Uh, area for us where we've heard a lot of feedback and um, that's why I'm here today. Great and uh, I am Dara so again great to meet you all online uh, if we probably know some of you some of you are customers some of you are not and um, yeah I'm the CEO with Effective so my job is probably varied but certainly even product where I can be I love it and could work with Sean to try and help uh, spec out what we're doing and focus on what we're doing so we're just going to have a little chat around that permit focus today and why we're why we're here. So um, I suppose there's, there's, you know, these three pains, we put them up, these are the three kind of talking points we're going to work around today. So um, if we start maybe just a little bit before the, 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 the pain points, I'm going to say for us, I suppose permits came out of, it was always on our radar, it was always an area that we wanted to um, sort of push for our customers. It was an area that was heavily requested by a lot of our customers as well. Um, you know, we do a lot in risk assessment, we do a lot in contractors, and a, a natural evolution of that is to go into the Kind of operational risks I don't permit to work. So it's, it's an area that we'd always planned to kind of go down that avenue and, and to, to, we think there is a, an opportunity there for a best in class solution on permit to work. So it's something that we've been looking at for a while and over the last sort of 12 months or so, I suppose the guys have been working on, on bringing this to, um, to the market and bringing it out and releasing it to our customers. Um, and it's, a, it's an area that I suppose when we tasked, the, the, when we looked at this and said to, to Sean, look, we want to we want to plan this out and we want to develop it. There's probably an area Sean would have delved in with a lot of our customers, done a lot of research, talked to the existing customers and, and got a lot of examples around how people are currently managing their permits. Uh, and these are probably some of the three key points that we wanted to address in that development kind of spec and what we're trying to do and achieve, I guess, Sean, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's say a couple of words about that. Yeah. I mean, so certainly it's been on the radar as uh, something we wanted to offer as part of the product for quite a while. Um, I suppose the work in earnest started, as Dara said, about 12 months ago. One of, one of the good things with working at Engage is um, we have uh, very connected customers who are not shy um, and are genuinely constructive and articulate in talking to us about stuff, direction they'd like to see the product go, things they'd like to see it do, et cetera. Permit came up again and again and again. In terms of my background, I hadn't come across permit before. That, that wasn't a thing I'd seen. So uh, I guess in the product team, we did the kind of standard thing we would do. We, we started talking to the founders of our business, first of all, to extract what do they think it is. 
And then we have a lot of touch points with customers that some of you who are customers on the line are probably familiar with. So we have these regular sessions where uh, customer uh, webinars where we get together either in person or online seminars. Um, and we tapped a bunch of you uh, for feedback and input on permit, um, both in terms of features, you know, what you think it should do, a permit system should do, what, what your kind of pain point is in the business, what is it you're trying to actually get done with your permits, um, as well as like stuff like that's been incredibly helpful, giving us samples of your permits, which, um, so we have a nice collection now of permits of all different types from all different businesses, all in paper. So everyone's, you know, one of the things that came across the first point here was pretty much everything uh, with a few exceptions right now, uh, a lot of people are using a lot of paper. Um, so the first thing was a kind of desire to get these permits off paper, the, have the paper as well. So printing, it turns out, is quite important, but yeah. you know, get them off paper to be primarily living in software in a digital kind of format. Um, so that was one thing. Um, and then the others are kind of related to that, perhaps, in that uh, how do you collaborate how do you make it easy for it, it's i guess permits are inherently like a lot of health and safety they're a team sport there's a there's a lot of players involved who are collaborating at different points um from the process to get the info together to issue a permit to making sure you have all the right stuff together when a permit gets inspected or an inspector calls or someone needs to see that the correct documentation is placed and so on, right? So uh, paperwork was number one and then collaborating was kind of number two. Uh, how, how you orchestrate the, the movement today and in, in many cases, the movement of these bits of paper around to make sure the right stuff is present and that the right trail of accountability is present yeah. when somebody asks or if something happens. No, absolutely. And I think there's, you know, one of the things that we kind of set out then as well. And I think when you, when you look at that and you got so much feedback from customers, and like you said, so many different examples of the permits that, you know, the different types of permits. Um, I think one of the things that we wanted to try and achieve was giving as much configuration or as much flexibility within that as possible. So as we try and do in pretty much all the modules, so creating your own templates, being able to take your version of your paper permit and bring that in. And I think, that opened up quite a few things, actually, just in terms of different approaches, different, uh, you know, lots of areas of flexibility, different types of permits that we'd be dealing with, even into things like um, approvals as well. So not just permits to work, but approvals for other things within a business. And also, I think, like you said, you had to kind of work between both contractors and then internal permits. So working with employees and try and build all of that into it. So there's kind of trying to bring all that together in a, in a flexible package that lets people do what they need to do. Yeah, I guess so. Exactly. So, what's been very instructive um, uh, now that you've mentioned that is so often when we start talking to people about their permits and their their use of them, the obvious place to start is the physical thing. Show us the bit of paper with the permit on it. That's very useful. And then the next thing that's very useful is so talk to us about the life of this bit of paper. Um, who 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 decides to start the process of um, creating a new permit? Can is it always the customer, the business does it, the the person who's issuing it? Can a contractor actually start the process? Um, and there's a game of tennis or a kind of workflow that goes on between whoever is going to actually do the work um, and whoever is issuing the permit, and understanding the workflow for the different customers has been very important because um, everybody has um, a broad similarity perhaps in some of the workflows, but they have tweaks or differences that, that ideally they want to try and incorporate in how the collaboration works. Yeah. That's always a tension for us to try and figure out where to draw the line there. What, what should we try and support? Oh, great. So I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to run through maybe just those points in a little bit more detail and then give a little view of, I uh, suppose, the, the version of the product that's there. Um, so we start, I suppose, with excess paperwork and maybe talk around that a little bit more. I think actually this is something that even, you know, obviously that push for a digitization, that move from paper to digital, that's something that's been there for a long time. It's been a big shift in, in, in EHS, certainly, and that's obviously something that we're trying to assist our customers with. 
but even now in the current times, we've seen probably a, a different reason for some of the, the, the urgency around driving that change from paper to digital and permits. And a lot of the customers that we've been talking to and people that have been trying it out have that you now concern about bringing contractors and, and you know, the issuing authorities or whoever's managing their permits to work within the business into that small space, face-to-face, -face, doing the paperwork, handing over paper, changing paper, and, you know, changing hands and, and passing it on. So I think obviously the, the current environment with COVID you know, presents its own challenges around that. Um, not that it'd be a, 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 the sole reason to do it, but it's another, you know, it's been another drive actually for a few of our customers to say, actually, the more paper that's been handed around and crossed over lots of different people, you know, it's increasing risk as well. So there's a, another layer of, 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 of urgency around moving that, uh, that process to digital. But I mean, like, as you said, paperwork, I think, is one of the major headaches with permits. Lots of versions, lots of, you know, multiple sheets. You got your book, you pass it on, you got to store it, you got to bring it somewhere else. So that's one of the challenges, I suppose, we're trying to eliminate with the, uh, with the, digital, the digital approach, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're obviously, uh, one of the things that came across, so yes, so the, the p paper for all of us in all our, even broader than permits, just generally, a lot of us find it uh, a pain in the ass for different reasons. Um, it's also though, it's also incredibly convenient and quite important to be able to produce paper at different points. So one of the things that came across in the requirements as we talked to people was, yeah, we want to have them digital and be shared and get rid of this paper and be able to attach things and blah, blah, blah. Um, but also, it's important to be able to print. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. That was, that was kind of interesting to us to, to not drop that fact that actually a lot of people, um, as, you, as you said, Dara, one of the things they'd like to be able to do is start with their own permit form and make a digital version of it in the Engage platform. So that's one of the things that, that, that we're doing. And then um, uh, in talking to customers, obviously permits in particular, uh, it's not just the permit itself, which is the contributes the amount of paper, it's all the stuff associated with it. I need to have all the training certs. I need to have records of the people on site. I need to have this, I need to have that. And they all need to be attached in some fashion uh, to the permit, which tends to mean big binders of stuff, right? Um, that need to go somewhere and need to be fairly secure and all that kind of stuff. So making them digital, it's, there's obvious benefits to, to dealing with all of that. Um, and also giving traceability about what happened to them, et cetera. Yeah, I think, yeah, like obviously GDPR was an area that a lot of people were concerned about as well, right? When we talked about this, and, and I suppose my history and permits goes back well before GDPR was, was a thing, you know? Um, <laughs> The, um, you know, in terms of operationally using permits to work, it's, it's been a while. But when we did, it was piles of paper that you were passing around from, you know, person to person within a business. And there's a lot of information on there that may not, you know, and should not now, certainly within the realm to GDP or be shared around and, 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 and accessible. So I think that was a, another area that a lot of people were concerned about was actually taking away that stacks of paper sitting somewhere and bringing it into something with secure access management and being able to manage that in a better way. So yeah, that brings us on. Uh, the, these these kind of pain points they're all intertwined in different ways. Um, but one of the things I mentioned is that that we clearly uh, that came across very strong in looking at the workflows and looking at the kind of interactions is that it's this team sport. It's it's about collaboration, um, and trying paper basically makes some of this collaboration more difficult. Um, and uh, makes access and sharing and sharing quickly and providing information for inspection, it just adds a lot of friction to that, which having something in electronic form can make it a lot easier. Okay. Yeah. This applies to general cases all over our businesses, uh, particularly applies in permits, where obviously work takes place often at particular sites or particular sites with controlled access and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think one of the one of the challenges that a lot of the customers that we talked to seen around this was that kind of distributed workforce and how do you how do you manage the permits effectively? I know there was anecdotes of people traveling with permits all over the country and you know mm -hmm. not willing to let people work off of photographs or, or, or photocopies or emails and the original permit copy had to go there and the amount of time and work. So 
you know, there's that's a, a considerable cost. There's a lot of layers of work that goes on that and just really roadblocks to working well together, as you say, in terms of collaboration with the contractors or employees, depending on who they are. Right. Um, and uh, on, a, on a similar theme, you know, when you look at the different, uh, the different, uh, the fancy word, I guess, is stakeholders, but basically all the people involved in, in this team sport, you've got, you've got the people doing the actual work, you've got the people often supervising those people doing the work, and the, the people issuing the permits who are responsible for making sure everything's checked off and everything's both on the issue and on, and on the sign-off stage. And also, as we picked up, there can be while permits are in progress, various other things can happen. They might need to get paused for a period or they might need to get revoked because of something happening on site and yeah. so on. Yeah. And meanwhile, um, one of the benefits, if, um, if we can take stuff out of paper, is giving a, a, a real-time or near real-time view of what's going on to other stakeholders. So people back in the office or at HQ or driving their car or on a train, we have the potential to actually provide a status to a picture of the states of permits and what's going on, who's who's where, yeah. <clears throat> or who says they are where and doing what, right? Uh, yeah, I think that was one of the most difficult points for a lot of people in terms of when you think about the paper management of it, it was always paper and then trying to use some form of digital element to give management tools for this. So, but if you think about Excel, which is where most of that ended up, you don't really get live updates in Excel. You know, you're very dependent on lots of people interacting with that and obviously lots of human error and lots of changes in, 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 in the, the form and, and things like that. So that was, I think that was one of the big pinch points for a lot of people was, okay, well, we can manage the paper, we can get the paper out, we can do the paper bit, okay. But then visibility to actually, you know, how many of those are active, where are they, in what parts of the business can we quickly see what's going on in this area, this area, or this site, or this division. And I think that was always a major challenge for people that we talked to, right? Yeah. And and this this notion of the life cycle of a permit, one of, one of the things paper can be not so great at is giving you a feel for what happened in what order, yeah. and kind of being sure that that's the case, or being yeah. more confident that that's the case, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're they're the they're the kind of biggies that that we extracted um, uh, in preparing our work for this both. Um, as I say, from Dara and from Billy, one of the co-founders, and you guys have a lot of uh, experience in the past with permit stuff, but then drilling into uh, the experience with customers was what kind of really informed um, how we went about this. Absolutely, and, and look, we did see a huge variety of, you know, obviously the types of permits, how people approached it, the level of information people were asking for, the level of interaction points, so there's there is quite a difference in terms of how people approach permits. And I know that was a challenge for you guys and, and I know you've stepped up to it, but it was a, you know, how do we, how do we manage all of those versions and how do we try and bring a solution that can be flexible enough to, to deal with that? So I think Sean, you're going to run us through uh, sort of a couple of maybe screenshots here, just initially, just to kind of give a headline of kind of the process that we follow through just to give an indication of how the kind of workflow goes. And then we're going to run through a, a short video then and have a little look at the system in, in use. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So let's give. So that's enough um, in terms of uh, what, where we came from and thinking through this. And as some of you may have uh, seen even some of our earlier sessions where we were looking for requirements from you and, and kind of going through that. Um, so here's a few. What I'll do is a couple of things. I'll give a, a few quick screenshots just to the, the for, of the new module called Permit to Work. Um, and I'll use the video to talk through some of the stuff in action. And um, so I'll just give you, because it's always best to just see the stuff rather than listen to us waffling on. Right? So um, do all of you online, don't be shy. Bail, I know you won't be, bail in with questions as we go along. We're happy to stop on anything and dive back in if there's something you want to see. Um, okay, so what, what, what we'll do is I'll show a little bit in a sec, but I've picked, we picked out a couple of things. So there's a new module called Permit to Work or Permits. It just turns up in the system. So if it's enabled for you, you can see a new module called Permits. When you go into it, you can do the kind of things you might expect. Um, you can issue new permits. Um, there's a little workflow built in there. Um, and there's some terminology that we'll kind of talk about. So we, we have the notion of who's allowed to issue a permit, 
um, is an issuing authority. You need a permission called issuing authority. Who's allowed to receive one and actually does the work? Um, that's a performing authority. So we'll use some of these terms as we go through. So here's just a little blow up that we've taken out of issuing a permit. You'll see this in the video. Um, a couple of things to point out. You know, we've kept the info to um, what we think is the minimum necessary but sufficient to kind of support um, the workflows and the info needed um, that you've told us about. Uh, so a couple of things worth mentioning here. You'll notice employee type. Um, it says here uh, that could be an employee, someone uh, you're issuing a permit to, someone who who is on your org chart who works for you, or it could be a contractor. And so we do distinguish between the two then. That's quite important. Some of the use cases can be slightly different for employees versus contractors. Um, so in this case, an employee happens to be Reese Witherspoon. There's a from and to date. And then there's a, some other info as you get into it that, that you'll see. And you hit an issue button and, and we issue a permit. Permits, what the hell are they? They're basically, uh, they're, they're a, it's a structured form, um, which when um, you look at it, it looks like a bunch of questions with different sorts of answers that somebody can fill in and uh, documents that they can attach. So uh, here you're just looking at uh, a little snippet from one of the forms. All guardrail systems are in place, including tow protection. And there's a little drop down that you can select, which has yes, no, or not applicable, and you can attach some files. So you, you can build your own permits. Uh, we call them templates that you can save away. And then when you're issuing, you can pick a template and issue it. And you can add to it and customize that um, uh, if you need to do that. For any of our customers that are on the line, they're going to be familiar with that, I guess, from audits in terms of, look, you can build out those question sets, you can build out your responses, and you can do that very easily in the template. So the, yeah. it's, it's very similar to audits in terms of how you build them up. Um, and obviously, if you're not a customer, we can show you that. Later. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, very similar. Like a, so Right now, like a, a simpler version of an audit form uh, in terms of how you can compose them, but the same idea that you can have a template. Hey, let's let's make a template for our existing permit form, and then let's just reuse that whenever we go issue one. Um, uh, and here we're just picking out uh, a, a little aspect of the workflow that um, there's a little uh, to and fro uh, implied in how we have put the system together where an issuing authority can make a new permit, can issue it to someone who's going to do the work, that person who's responsible for it receives the permit and needs to attach a bunch of information and answer some questions. Um, so uh, when they do that, they accept it and send it back. We assume uh, or have built into the workflow that you want to check that, check it's all okay, everything is attached, and then issue the permit. So that's like the, the world's shortest happy path, which is create a new permit, issue it to someone, have them answer all the questions, attach the stuff, send it back to you, you check it, it's good, you issue the permit, it goes live. So that's the happy path. And then there's various, uh, let's call them unhappy paths off, off that where it's like, oh, you didn't attach all the stuff, I'm gonna reject it till you do it, blah, 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 right? So there's a bit of workflow in there, that's the point of this, right? And you get to the point where you sign it off and that makes the permit live. Right, so let's, what we'll do real quick now, unless there are questions. There's a couple of questions there, so I might just, while you're loading up that video, I'll read yeah. them out and we can answer them between us. Um, so one is, can the system provide overall stats or data at the year end? So this many permits were given based on this type of job, this location, et cetera. So what we'll touch on, and we'll have a little slide on it later, this is kind of version one. And there is, all the data is there, it's all available. So the data is available, but we'll be building out reports um, and some analytics around this probably over the next couple of months in terms of sort of uh, release two and release three uh, as we go through that. So you can get a very quick view um, and you'll see that in the system now of all that's going on and you can summarize that and sort that and you can get the data so that that is easily available and readily available. And then we're going to be building in as we do with all of our modules, insights dashboards, which will give a lot more um, sort of visuals around what's happening and, and, and uh, some easily accessible reports on that. But that is all there and will all be available. Um, and we had another question, which is, can we add images as we go through? So absolutely. Um, as you go through and for every single question, for each type, as you go through it, you can see you can add in images up against those files. 
So it can be, you know, photos. Obviously, again, driving this through mobile is one of the key um, kind of development uh, paths that we're going to be following and allowing them seamless photos to go up from the mobile device while the permits in use are in, in, uh, in operation. So um, that's all built in and been able to take those photos right now. And then, you know, right now you'd attach them, but then the mobile piece will be coming very shortly. Um, Paul asked a question there as well about how the timeline for changes is tracked and recorded. Um, I'll actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll dive into the video, give you a look at that as we go through, I'll call it out. And if it doesn't answer your question, just hit us again on the, on the live thing and we'll come back to you. Uh, so this little video, uh, it's not too long and I'll just pause it as we go along. So uh, don't be afraid. So uh, what we're doing first is just th this, this is a kind of a compressed video of a few things going on and we're going to use it to, to talk through a few points. It lets you see um, the reason we're using a video rather than a live thing is filling them out. As you're probably aware of permits is a little bit tedious. So it's best to compress that in a little video and show you the idea as we go through. So first of all, when you click the permit module, you go here. Um, whereas here, you're in the permit module. Uh, I'm in my little demo account. Um, you can pay attention to this as we go through the video because this is me. Um, but I'm actually going to log in as some different people as we go through. I'm going to log in. To, I'm going to issue a permit, log in as the person it's issued to, do some stuff, come back, blah, blah, blah. Right? Just to show the workflow. So let's do the basics first of all. So here we are with a list of permits. We are defaulting when I come into the in progress tab. And the reason for that is this is where you spend most of your time. Right, so uh, permits here could be in different states. You can see that one here is expired, and then one, two, three, four, five, six are issued. That means I've sent them to a performing authority. So to typically a contractor or performing authority, someone's going to do the work, and I'm waiting for them to complete them and get them back to me. When they come back to me, they will be in a different state. We call the status accepted. So we've, we've, in our little workflow, we've defined all these and we've, we can, uh, we've got a nice little flow that we think makes sense. So our you one is issued to a performing authority. When they accept it and send it back, it's accepted. And then I review it and set it live and it goes live, right? So in this case, uh, an old one here is expired and these bunch are all outstanding. And if we just briefly check the little fields, permit's got a number, to uh, they have a name, that's kind of a little title that was set up. They have a status, which I mentioned. Somebody issued this, that's the issuing authority. In all cases in this demo, this is me. The PA is the performing authority. So this is the person that I, 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 I issued the permit to. This is when they expire. And this is where I can go look at the detail. And you can ignore this for now. This is, as you can see, we're, um, we're adding new features all the time. So there's some stuff here that's slightly different than two of them. Ignore them, pretend it doesn't exist. Um, up top here, you can see if I have a draft permit, it'll appear in this list. Those of you who are used to the system already, this will all look pretty familiar. And then ones that are closed and finished with go into the big list of closed and archived where I can find them later if I need to. But I, it defaults to here because this is probably where I spend most of my time. And I use this little drop down here. If I want to, as this list gets large, if I want to just focus on those that are live or those that are um, rejected or accepted or whatever, I can use this to filter and slice that a, a bit better. Um, the other thing to note up top here is uh, there's at the very top, there's um, a permits, um, permits and templates uh, are at the very top in terms of tabs. So temp those little two guys there. So uh, templates are where I'd see a list of my templates. So this is typically where you might, um, if you have uh, one single permit form or 10 permit forms that you use in your organization, you are probably uh, going to make a set of templates here. It might be one-to-one -one that each, each permit paper form you use right now becomes one single uh, template. It may be a bit more subtle than that. There may be common sections that you have across your permit forms on paper, and you may make a template just for that section and then we use it in different places and compose it. So whatever, that's what it's for. It, it, those of you, if you're an existing customer um, and you're used to audits and audit templates, it's similar to how that works. Uh, template reusable chunk of form that I can apply elsewhere. 
So we won't look at that now. What we'll do real quick is we'll go back to my in progress um, uh, permits and we'll take a quick look just to show you what one looks like. So I'll pause it here for a sec. So here is a permit that has been issued. Things to have a look at. Um, so let's briefly touch on what, what can I store about a template? So th this is common information, this stuff up here, right? So uh, they have a title. It has a status that we've covered already. I've got a description. and uh, might be a description of the work that's just a handy, quick description. Um, a location, which is a free text area to, to put in something uh, about where the work takes place. A number the system generates from to, so when the permit's valid from, uh, until when it uh, expires, who's going to perform it, who issued it, and then this timeline, which you notice here, um, uh, which tracks the timeline of what happened to the permit. So for that earlier question. Yeah, we have uh, a couple of questions going to tie into that as well here, actually, as you go through it. So um, it's yeah. probably kind of worth explaining. One was going to, yeah, is a permit um, admissible as correct and unaltered? So how do you how do you know what happened to the permit, basically, I suppose, are you able to you know, show that and prove that within the, uh, within the system? So that's certainly one there, I think, that the timeline would address, yeah. Yeah, we, so the timeline tells you, uh, maybe there's two things we're, we're touching on there. The timeline will show you the sort of high level summary of the life story of a permit in all its journey through a workflow. So here you can see Sean O'Sullivan created it uh, April 15th at 1737, blah, 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 and then issued it uh, basically 40 seconds later. So I created the thing from a template and issued it right away. Right? And that's all that's happened to it in this case. As, as the ding-dongs through the workflow, that builds up a story. The other thing is that the, the actual delta of the changes made along the way are all retrievable. So in the case of an issue or someone needing to go, wait a minute, what change was made at this particular step that, that is retrievable in the system? Which may be the nature of the question, right? Yeah, and from from a use case perspective, I think yeah, like the, the performing authority is the only person that can actually sort of input uh, information into that. So it's assigned to a performing authority. They're the only person that can actually complete that, unless it's handed over to somebody else. And the same for the issuing authority is that they have to interact with their permits, unless it's handed over to somebody else to manage. Which again is all tracked. So you always have the tracking and the the, the stamping there of the person who's responsible and the chain and the overall change of state within the permit as well, isn't that correct? Yeah. Um, and so now just to, we're touring down an issued permit here. Now you're into, after we left the sort of headline details there, you're now into the, the meat of the permit itself, right? So this is, this is something that you would determine, this is, a, this is from a template I made, and in your case, in your organization, you would decide what, what goes in here completely. So, um, really we're showing you this just to give you a feel for the kind of basic stuff that you can put in here. So here I've structured this permit as um, a, a section called works overview, where I want to capture a bit more detail about the description of the work, the specific tasks, the equipment to be used, the location of works. I've put in some stuff about contractor specific details here. And then I've put in some stuff further down just to show working about task specific permits and a whole bunch of checklist kind of questions. So these I actually took from uh, a real permit that someone had uh, where in, in the permit case on paper, these are kind of ticks that need to be done. You know, was the work area inspected for live, live services identified? Yes, no, or not applicable. Were the beans of access checked? Yes, no, or not applicable or barriers and signage in place and so on, right? So um, does it match perfectly in all cases? Perhaps not, but as we evolve it, we are making sure that we evolve the question and answer types that we have, that they, they match pretty good to most of your cases, right? Um, what I'm gonna jump to real quick now is I'm gonna issue a permit. So I'm gonna make a brand new one and just walk you through that super quick, right? So here I'm gonna make a new permit um, and I think we'll, so some construction works, so title, description, uh, location, which right now is free text where you can put in the location. Later, we will probably be doing some more geocoding around specific locations and uh, let you associate a real physical location 
with the permit itself. And that'll get us into some other future work we we'll talk about later on. So here's the thing we're pointing at here. So title, description, location, kind of obvious. And now I have the option to pick a template. So this is where I'm now using a template. Uh, remember what I'm doing here is I'm going to issue a new permit and I have a choice of picking one of my pre-canned templates. So in my case, I've made a bunch of, I've made a bunch of templates. Uh, you can see I've kind of labeled some cost A, cost B, cost C. These are ones as we were working through this where we take a real paper permit that a customer gave us and see the way it's laid out and all the questions and answer types it has. Can we can we map that into how we represent uh, the, the questions and answers that we have here? Um, the other thing, uh, the ones that I've labeled generic, here I've taken a kind of a, a subsection that's reused often across multiple templates, like the details on a contractor or the works we performed. Often these look the same. So you may want to have a little template for a sub part of a form that you could just use yourself when you're comp composing a new permit. So in this case, um, I think I'm just going to grab its customer B. And when I say add work, boom, you will see a whole pile of stuff just pours in to the template. So this comes from the template and now this goes into the permit. I can collapse it here. So you can see I collapse that little element, right? And I'll just go back a little bit to show you that. So oops, let's go forward again. I'll pause it. Um, so that little, this little bar here, uh, again, those of you familiar with uh, our, our uh, platform already will be used to this in other places. But if you have a large chunk like this, you can collapse it. And that way, if you have multiple of these in here, it makes them possible to manage. Uh, when you have a lot of information, you can collapse the ones you're not working on and just focus on the ones you're working on. So this then shows the questions and all the, the content of the permit. And um, I think this will be obvious to most of you, but this kind of gives you a feel of um, the nuts and bolts inside here. So there's a question which says description of the work. There's a type of answer you're expecting and you can set whether it's required or not. So if it's required, it gets flagged with a little orange asterisk and you have to complete that um, in order to <coughs> get the uh, permit completed. So I think you get the idea. Here's a question, here's another question and on and on and on. Right? So here I've structured it into some different areas. So I had an initial high level section um, about the works itself. Then I have some questions about the contractor itself and so on. And you're free to make these whatever way you want. So just, here's- just While you're in there, Sean, actually, I might just interrupt with one of the questions. So one of the questions came through as how would you link, how would you put multiple permits together? So a hot works in a confined space is if you want to issue it. And I think you can kind of show that there in terms of the ad work section. So you can have a template for your hot works template for your confined spaces and they can all be added under one permit that goes out or one one issuance that goes out so you can combine those depending on how people do that operationally yeah? exactly yeah I, I guess and uh, at the risk of um making it even more complicated uh there's maybe two things worth mentioned in there one what that you've mentioned which is you could have them as templates and drop them in and compose them on the fly the other thing is that in terms of future work we have a known uh, area we want to do, a known feature that we call sub permits and um, that we will be developing. Uh, not done yet, doesn't exist right now, but we do have a plan for it. So uh, we had noticed that a number of customers have this notion of a master permit and then they attach a bunch of sub permits to it. It has some implications because it can affect obviously the workflow and there are dependencies that are important to get right, such as we assume if I revoke the master permit, all the sub permits get taken with it, et cetera. So it has some things, moving parts that have to be put in place to make sure we get that right. Okay, uh, in the interest of time, I will truck on real quick. So that's a quick tour of a permit, right? Um, so this is one we're gonna issue. Uh, so what I did was I just gave it a title, description, location, I inserted a, um, uh, I used a particular template, which is this customer B generic one. Uh, now it's a draft permit. I could keep adding things to it. I could come back to it tomorrow and add more things to it, whatever. I could add more questions in here, work or whatever I wanna do. And um, it's gonna sit there as a draft until I issue it. So in this case, I'm gonna issue it. 
And the first thing to notice here, just pause it, is when I issue, we have this kind of crude but high level distinction here between issuing to an employee or a contractor. If I issue, if I select contractor, then the person in the next drop down will only be someone who has performing authority who works for that contractor, right? So it kind of gives us a little bit of safety slash control in issuing, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there's a allowing... question just from one of the, sorry, Sean, there was a question yeah. from uh, one of the customers, I think, just in relation to do, do contractors need to have access to the system? So they would have access to the system. You would grant them um, access to the portal and then they're able to complete the permits in there. Absolutely. So in this case, I'm going to issue one to Reese and uh, pick a farm at a two date. And uh, because I have everything else inside the permit itself, that's it, I just go issue, right? So the permit was successfully issued, there it is on my list. And I could go look at it right now, you can see that there I am hammering up the fact that it's issued. If I go look at it, um, it changes its appearance slightly, I can't edit it anymore right now because it's been issued to Reese. So I can, I can see it, but unless I revoke it, I can't do anything to it now, it's with, it's with the performing authority to do something, right? So if we now watch the top, I, I'm going to log out. Um, uh, I'm logged back in. The little employee profile has changed up there in the top right-hand side. So you'll see Reese. And if she goes to her list of in progress, uh, you can see a bunch of them there. One is expired, two are issued. And we'll just see what it looks like from her point of view. Right, so we're going to drop into this. Um, in fact, the first thing I did here when I recorded this was hit accept, just to go, oh, let's accept it. And obviously that doesn't work. And it doesn't work because I've got a bunch of items which are flagged as mandatory, which I must complete, right? So in this case, this is, um, this is me just kind of walking through um, filling in the details, right? So this is what it looks like for somebody filling in the details as they go answering the questions. So you can see in this permit, I've got to put in my name and the person in charge of work and the phone number and the blah, 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 blah right? Um, and as I go down, so this is contractor details, and now we're getting into work details and answering the questions. So I, I've got some specific other permits required associated with this. And then I jump down and answer a bunch of, which are mostly for this checklist piece, uh, yes, no questions. Um, so, uh, so far, that's so simple, right? So let's just move that along a bit. Well, actually, I'll let that go. Um, let's just check for some other questions. Yeah, there's a couple there. So I think we, we've, like John was asking your status, I think we've addressed that one. Uh, just kind of be open, closed, as well as expired and issued. So I think, yeah, we've hopefully shown that. You've got your various different states as you go through that and the, the permit transition between those states and the rules, depending then on which state they're in. Um, the next one is, can you link risk assessments, training and competence records to the permit? So. So I'm not sure if Paul's a customer or not. Um, so there's probably two ways. Right now we talk about kind of attaching in. So we'd ask questions around certain uh, training requirements for that work or attaching up risk assessments from the contractor so they can attach them up um, as an external file, a PDF, anything else that goes up onto that, images and attach in. And then I think a body of future work is looking at linking it into the contractor records, but that's not done yet, am that right? Correct, yeah. So there'd be an open feed of once you select people involved, you can tick the, the, the relevant training courses as a contractor and suck that in. And that's something yeah. that we do in incidents where we pull in the, the training records for employees. So a similar uh, similar body of work is going to be looked to be implemented across permits as well by feeding in some of that information. In the future. Right, yeah. So exactly. So one of the things, particularly existing customers will be familiar with um, one of the strengths of the, the system is that we have all these different modules and often you can link those modules together. So you can attach an order to a piece of plant or whatever. So the same will be true here. In this, we haven't yet pulled the deep linkage into the other elements uh, of, of the platform. We've started with the core around getting the permits right and the workflow right. And then we will enrich it by adding in some of the links to other things that pre-exist. Um, so just to catch you up, uh, here's what's happened here is Reese um, answered all the questions, accepted the permit. 
So I logged back in as myself. My little profile pic has changed up here. And I'm now looking at what Reese gave me. Right? So I can go down and look at, oh, I see all the answers she gave, blah, 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 whatever. So in this case, uh, just to show uh, a little tickle of the workflow, um, I rejected it and said, I eh, expected to see some training certs and some other stuff attached. So I'm actually going to reject that and send it back to you. Right? So I logged back in as Reese, just to give you a look at what um, she sees now. And so she can see this back in her in tray in effect in the in progress tray um, and can decide, okay, I see what you mean. I didn't attach stuff and go and attach some training certs. So here I go and attach some certs, a list of who's working on site or whatever other attachments I need. Attachments are obviously um, quite important in the whole permit uh, process and flow. We're obviously supporting attachment of documents in general to a permit. And as that question mentioned, we'll also be linking as opposed to attaching to other uh, things in the Engage platform. Um, so at the end of this, uh, the next step, um, Reese has uh, attached her stuff. I'm gonna go look at it. Uh, and so I'm back in here as me, and see that she's attached her stuff. And then I'm finally gonna just sign off the permit so it goes live and that's it. So that's the end of the suffering of the looking at the video. Hardly suffering. Uh, um, great. Thank you very much. Um, so, look, I suppose what we'll do is there's another couple of questions there, and I know one time wise we're fairly tight, all right. We might have a look at a couple of those questions and then just talk about maybe some of the stuff that's coming in the future as well, uh, just to give people a flavor of the work, I suppose, that's ongoing. So, like you said, this is the, the kind of first release, and something we do is release quite uh, um, uh, quickly on, on, on a lot of our new products. So with the likes of Insights and things like that, we'll be releasing regularly. It'll be similar with Permit. We'll be pushing out new features if we have them. Um, but yeah, some of the questions, is it possible to pre-populate the system with centrally approved contractors and upload their risk assessments? So on the overall system, absolutely. On the contractor management tool, you've got a, a full system there of approved, unapproved contractors. You can track their documents, track if they're in date, um, track the training records, risk assessments, have all of that centrally held. So you have that as a, as a source. I know we didn't show that on the demo, but that's part of the core system that we have. Um, and then, like we said, right now, you can grant access to those contractors to complete permits and work on the permits and upload information. And there will be some smarts then connecting all that information across for the contractors as well. So they don't have to duplicate any work and it speeds up their approach to it as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of that is done. And then there's some, some intelligent links that we'll be adding in uh, as well to, to, to really make that uh, very slick for, for contractors to use. Uh, so I'll just mark those as we go through. Um, are hazard controls, control measures, required PPE included? And I guess the way we look at that is through the templates, right? So we talk about building out those question sets, checklists, tick boxes as part of your templates. That's how we really approach that, Michelle. Yeah? Uh, yes, yes, I guess. Right now, that is how we, 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 would, we would template them and have them included in the main uh, permit. Um, I think there may be a longer answer about uh, back to this linking in the platform to other things that, that you want to have people do um, from the main permits so that we could associate with them and have them, you know, if a, if a risk assessment, uh, pre-existing risk assessment could be attached, we might uh, look at how you could require that this risk assessment is completed and have somebody confirm tick off that they've done it first. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, there's another question to Sarah in sort of multiple roles within a permit where you're looking for the names of people included. So again, we just talk about building that in as part of the question set. So, you know, if you need to list out who's the site manager, who's the authorized person, who's the competent person, and operatives that are working on the, on the job, that's the question types where you can build that in and the contractor will have to fill that or the employee will have to fill that out as part of the submission for the permit. That's kind of, again, the way we've, we've, we've looked at that, yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe worth mentioning briefly. So we started out with uh, deliberately um, uh, a fairly simple model initially of permissions and you know issuing authority and performing authority. That's become a little bit richer over time um, based on feedback. 
So as we understand how you might need, there may be somebody who does admin work on permits inside a contractor and needs to be able to do certain things with the permit, but not other things. We're making some of the permissions more fine grained for the people involved in the collaboration. Um, and another question then, we might sort of take one more because we're probably just tight on time and then anything else we can come back to, I guess, around um, answering after the, the webinar as well, if that's okay. Um, how do we deal with field changes? So uh, this is probably so gas monitoring, let's say in, um, in the tank and recording those readings. So I know right now, that's, that's not something we do, I think it's, it's fair to say. Um, that's kind of, you know, at transition stages or on a transition point that we're asking for input and information to be captured. So I know that's one of the sort of early future bodies of work is looking at being allowed to work through that kind of process flow of, of changing the states from live to on hold until some information goes in and then back to live again. Right, yeah. 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 We wrecked your head with all those kind of workflows and complex yeah. animals, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, so there are a whole bunch of um, future items. So let's see, let's flick on these, but th there, there are a whole lot of future items. Um, that, so we're, where this is at right now is we've just begun to open it up for, for customers um, to start using it and giving us some feedback. Um, on our to-do list, there's a bunch of stuff as you might imagine. Um, some is, I, I put the first, two items together because they're in some ways interlinked. Um, one is richer workflows. So just we started out with a straightforward workflow so as not so as deliberately not to complicate the hell out of the thing to begin with so that people could understand it and use it and then get feedback to see where are we missing some workflow elements that we might need to support. Um, we do have the notion of in terms of the states of permits that you could pause a permit or revoke a permit, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, even from the very beginning, uh, Dara and Billy had flagged, for example, uh, that there could be little milestones inside a permit that you get to a particular point, the permit needs to stop until there's an explicit activity, such as an inspection, which allows it to proceed. Um, the reason I connect this to permissions is uh, often then it, it causes you to require more fine-grained permissions. Who is allowed to do that pausing or does it happen automatically? Who is allowed to unblock it to allow it to proceed? Is it the same person who issued it or is it someone else? Blah, 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 right? There's a bunch of different permissions you may need there. And the other thing is that a lot of customer permits are um, that we've reviewed are implicitly put together a particular way. They're put, to, they're put together in sections and actually only the contractor or performing authority is allowed to fill in certain sections mm -hmm. and only the issuing authority is allowed to fill in or check other sections. So we're actually looking at bringing that in to the permits so that you could have a single permit, but depending on your permission, you're only allowed edit or change certain sections and other, other players are allowed to edit other sections. And it is, it's a, it's a bit of a balance between kind of simplicity of use. I think one of the areas we're always focused on is keeping that user experience, you know, seamless, as frictionless as possible and give that perception of ease because it needs to be, right? For people to use it, it has to be simple. But there's a depth of functionality in the back that we have to try and address as well. And so we're starting off where we are and then kind of building from that. You know? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly one of the things that we heard very clearly from those who've used other permit systems, uh, one of the constant uh, uh, moans about them is is they're overly complicated and too difficult. Yeah, now, our approach is going to be, for want of a better way of putting it, is to come at that problem from below. So to start simple and only add complexity where there's really a good reason for it and get to what you need as opposed to try and engineer um, you know, a rocket ship and then try and subtract things because people won't use it. So yeah. we definitely we start from simplicity and try and defend any complexity we add till we get to a nice balance. And yeah. that's probably how we approach it and that's the house style, I guess.
Yeah, and look, I mean, I think the early feedback has really been positive in, in relation to that simplicity and, you know, uncomplicated, easy to use, which is what we're, we really want to, to, to provide as a user tool. Um, and I think, you know, so far, probably, if we say the 80-20 rule, about 80% of the, the requirements are kind of there in terms of being able to issue the permits and do what they need to do. And 80% of the use cases people seem to be able to configure for, and we're, we're working on those other areas then to, to, to build right. on sensibly over time, I guess. Yeah. Um, so real quick, other things we're working on, mobile. Uh, so permits inherently are, while everything we've shown there is on the web, um, we are, it has been designed to work on mobile, uh, either work well on mobile in the browser, uh, but also work well ultimately in our Engage app. So our Engage app is, is ultimately our, uh, our platform around putting health and safety in your pocket and put in the features that you need wherever you are um, uh, on your phone uh, or on your tablet. Um, and then other stuff probably to be expected, uh, those of you familiar with the product will know we've got some good analytics dashboards for main areas like observations and incidents and actions and audits and stuff. We'll need to do one of those for permits. We haven't done it yet. We'll have a richer set of question types over time. Again, balance here to not complicate the hell out of it, but give you richer control over representing your existing forms and smarter notifications. So uh, part of the keep everyone engaged, keep people appropriately informed is to have interesting but appropriate notifications related to permits going to the stakeholders at the right time. Absolutely, very good. Okay, look, I know we've, we've pushed on on time, so we might kind of wrap up at that um, or Laura will be giving out to us. So uh, there are a few outstanding questions there. What we might do is we'll come back around for those questions and we'll get back to you. Some of them are commercial, so we'll be happy to, to get somebody to have a chat and uh, in relation to if you're a customer with your CS manager or if you're not with one of the team, just to discuss how, um, how the licensing works and how you can get access to it. Um, and then some of them are more uh, domain. So we yeah, will certainly feel those questions and try and come back around with some answers to anybody that's asked anything that hasn't been addressed. So I think at that point, we might say thank you very much for your attention. It's uh, been great to have you all on. And uh, thank you, Sean, for giving us that in-depth run through. It was very good. Thank you very much. Good talking to you all and good questions. Yeah, no, it was great. Thanks all for listening and for, for getting engaged and asking questions. And hopefully we'll see you all soon. Stay safe. Cheers. Yeah, stay safe. Take care. Cheers, guys.